Retirement accounts are at all time highs. This is according to new study or new data come that came out from Fidelity. And this is good news, right? Retirees or people close to retirement or people across the board have more and more in their savings for retirement. So what's the catch? Why am I talking about it? What's the bad news here? Tony Shore is on the show now. Welcome to the show, Tony. Yeah. So we have retirement accounts at all time highs. Yet, what is my problem with that? Does do you guess I'm gonna I'm gonna let you come up with me being Debbie Downer? What is the problem? I don't know. Yeah. I'll what is it. the? Yeah. Good. I, that is a good question. I mean, are you concerned? Uh, retirement accounts at highs at all time highs. That's a good thing, isn't it? I think so, but there's always the there's always me that has to ruin the there's party. Always, uh, let's... Here's the link below to watching on YouTube, the link to the data. And this is the Fidelity Q1 or quarter one, the first quarter of 2024 retirement sure. analysis. Okay, so here's the data. Here's what it says. Account balances are up. Quote, record high contribution levels coupled with positive market conditions pushed average account balances to their highest level since the fourth quarter of 2021 so two years it's taken and now we're back above that level mm -hmm. from two years ago um so this would be i mean granted we're already almost done with 2024 but this date is a little lagging but in the first quarter of 2024 we were just catching up to where we were at the last quarter of 2021 two right. years so what does that tell you? I guess it's good, right? Right. Yeah. But I don't know if it tells us anything, Dan, because here's my frustration with it. Let me just say this. We've done, we've even done shows on this about, and I've seen all the statistics that say, you know, a big percentage of Americans don't have enough saved for retirement. Uh, the average American only has thirty thousand dollars saved for retirement or something you know i forget what the figure is but it's low and it's not nearly enough you know the average person who's right. 55 did not save enough for retirement and then you see headlines which seem to completely contradict it uh, and say you know account balances ha are at record high contribution levels so yes. which is it does Which it have it? to be one or the other or? Well, the it's never enough. We've done, you're right. Well, We've done shows on, true, true. Never enough. You never have enough, right? Yeah. Um, but you bring up an interesting point. Contribution levels are at the highest. Look at this stat. Savings rates are up. Quote, total average 401k savings rates reached a record high of 14.2%. Driven by employee and employer 401k. 1k contributions so a lot of times you'll say oh my 14 percent. who's saving 14 percent? well that's the average so you that means people are saving more some are saving less wow. but this includes the employer portion so if you you know put in five percent and you get a match of five percent that's ten percent savings rate technically so that's how that would go but you know are we seeing people saving seven eight ten percent uh, what they're saying is the saving rates are an average of 14.2. So obviously we are. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, so, I, I know so six to good. 10%, a lot of people I know are saving six to 10%. And my wife and I are in that category. We're trying. And then your to... company matches, you know, your wife's company might match. So that puts, you could see how she could be at 15%. Mm -hmm. um, so this is a good thing. Right. So right. bounces are up. People are saving more as a percentage. That is good. The delayed gratification is good. A lot of it's automated through their paycheck. So that's good. It could be that a lot of the times um, recently, I'd say about three years ago, they changed it where there's a way to have an automatically increase the amount that you save every year. The companies step it up. You know, you set that. A lot of people set up their 401k and then they don't look at it again for years but they've added the automatic increase in there by default. And here's the last that I want to show on this. Well, no, there's another one after this, but Gen X. All right, Tony, there we are, you and I. Yep. Um, 
So the first quote for the first time, the 15 year continuous balance for Gen X participants surpassed the 15 year continuous balance for boomers. So oh, wow. the, the 15 year continuous balance for Gen X is 543,400 versus 543,200. So for the first time, Gen X has more, at least with fidelity, in savings for retirement than the boomers. Hmm. Interesting, right? Right. Um, now that number seems high for 543,000. You know, we hear stats that, you know, people don't have enough money to fix their car um, if it breaks down. But this is a 15 year continuous. So this is people that have been saving for at least 15 years. Right. Right. Um, but this flip that Gen X is going to have more than boomers doesn't surprise me because what's going on with boomers? Boomers right now, this year, 2024, the youngest are 60. Is that right? Am I math right? So, and then the oldest are 75 ish. So they're already taking required minimum distributions. They're, they're retired hopefully. So they're taking money out of their 401k. So I could see the average balance going down for boomers because they're spending it. Hopefully. Whereas Generation X, most of them are still working. You know, very high percentage of them are still right. working. So this doesn't surprise me, but it's good to see. It is that good. They're, that they're, those that have been, and what this also says is if you save for 15 years through good and bad times, you'll right. do okay. You'll do yeah. okay. As long yeah, as you but you need to going. save continuously for 15 yeah. years. Right, yeah. right. Or more, right? Gen X. Or, or more. 20, 30 years. So um, here's the here's the one stat that it's not this is not the one you know punch to the face or the caveat or the the problem. What's the catch? This I just want to point this out though. Four hundred one k loans. Quote the percentage of workers with a loan outstanding on their four hundred one k remained at seventeen point eight percent this quarter, hmm. consistent with Q four twenty twenty three levels, but higher than a year ago, which was sixteen point seven. So people have taken loans out against their 401ks. Yes. 17.8%. That's, you know, one in six or whatever. That's a lot. If it's it, too many. It, yeah. It seems, I, I don't see this very often. It should be one or two or 3% at most, right? Yes. I would. Well, I, I mean, mean, I don't know what it should be. I mean, I just. Because that should be extreme emergency only type situations. Right. I've done, I've, I've helped people with 401k loans. And that is usually a, one of two situations. One, they have an excruciating debt outside that they need to tackle because their interest rate is 30%, 25%. Mm -hmm. And so it's like, where are we going to go to stop the bleeding? We could do a 401k loan, huge risk of taking a loan from a 401k. If you lose your job or quit or change careers, you have to pay that off. Um, and then you're paying it off with an early withdrawal penalty and such. So I've done that to, to refinance their debt or, mm -hmm. you know, get back on their feet. I've also done it where people needed to purchase something, um, in the short term and they need a down payment or something. And then sure. the intent is to pay it back. But rarely does a 401k loan make sense. Um, right. So to see that 17, 18% of people have that, that was a surprising mm. stat to me. Yeah. That's a negative. So for sure. But that's not the negative I want to focus on because maybe we should focus on positives, Tony. Yeah. Account balances are up. Savings are up. Good. Gen X is a big chunk of change. Good. What's the catch? Where's the problem? Now, why are they doing this? Why is this happening? One, dollar cost averaging. Like I said, they're continually saving and they're buying when the market goes down and when the market goes up. And we've had market growth. So that's why. Yeah, we hit record highs this year. Right. So you should see record high balances if mm -hmm. we're hitting record high in the stock market. Yeah. Because that's where most people are invested in their right. 401k. Sure. Now, it took two years to get back to the record highs because 2022 was terrible. Right. Right. We, we, we can't forget that. We were talking at the end of 2021, 2022 was a big dip. 
2023 was good. 2024 has been good. And we're finally back to where we were at the end of 2021. But we've also been saving during that time. So you've been adding to it and you're just getting back. So that shows you, one, you you shouldn't panic because it'll come back in theory. But two, um, it could take a while. A dip could really hurt. Yeah, yeah. A significant dip, they, you know, usually it takes a couple of years, you know, like it did for in 2008, took two or three years to get out, but then it skyrocketed. Then we hit record highs. So, so if you sold out and panic, you Mm -hmm. missed the rebound and now you're really in trouble. Yeah. But here's the catch. Not everyone can hold on. And this is the concern for baby boomers and the beginning now with Gen X. Now we have to worry about dollar cost ravaging which is the opposite of dollar cost averaging. We did a show on it for those. I really recommend everyone watch that. We did it two years ago. I was looking, Tony, two years ago, we did a show on this. And, um, in, per, you know, 2022 was when the market was going down across the board. That was a big time to watch it. I think people need to revisit that show. But basically what I'm saying is when you stop s- saving and you start, and start spending, spending more, then all of a sudden, you can't just sit and, and you're not sitting by nature. You're not just riding out the wave. You're not sitting and adding more and you're not buying when it's going down. You're taking out when it's going up and down. So now we have to worry about sequence of returns, the hmm. sequence of returns risk or dollar cross ravaging. That's the issue that I want to bring up for people to truly understand and um, realize that it's going to impact you as you retire. Bottom line, in a nutshell, if you don't touch your money, it'll come back, right? Doesn't matter over the long term. But if you are taking money to spend every month, you're going to have to care about the returns. Because now all of a sudden, if we have a 2022, think about this, people that retired in 2022, everything was down. Stocks, bonds were down and they were taking money out. And if they had their money in that market, and it went down and then they took it out to spend the market came back, not that money. Cause it's already been spent. So that's a problem, but it's only a problem. If you have negative years in the beginning, it's only a problem. If you really have negative years in the beginning, but no one knows when that's going to be. No so the solution is though, is once you hit retirement and need to s- start taking money out instead of putting money in is before that time to have some money in things where your principles protected so right. you're not losing right. as much we've done met countless shows on this and that's the, that's the message is if you're going to be retiring soon say within five years you need to have a plan okay when i do retire i'm not adding any more to my 401k so i'm in that boomer category now where it's kind of flat or going lower i'm not only not adding but i'm going to be taking out of money so where's that money going to be do i want it in the market No. You want it somewhere in cash, safety, somewhere where it doesn't matter what the market does. So if you do happen to retire in 2008 and nine, or you you do retire in 2022 or at the end of 2021 and everything's happened great, everything's great. And then we have a correction. You're not going to panic, right? Hmm. It's already baked into your plan. Yeah. So that's, so that's my warning is yes, everything's at all-time highs, savings are up, people are saving more, they have bigger balances. Um, Gen X has got a big chunk of change now for retirement, but those same people are looking to retire soon. They need to think about how they're going to spend that, how they're going to stop, when they're going to stop, the timing of it all, very important. So conclusion is market's the place to be, right, over time, all-time highs. How many times... Are we at all time highs? And everyone's like, oh, this is it. It's going to go down. We're, we can't go higher than this, right? <laughs> you hear you it know. all the time. Yeah. You're always going to hear it because there's always somebody that's like, I've seen, I've been in it for 20 years and I've never seen it this high. I can't go. It's always going to go higher, right? That's the whole point of growth. Um, but sometimes it goes down and it takes a while for that correction to fix itself. How many years? The average is less than a year to get back to where you were. Sometimes it takes two years. Sometimes it takes longer. It's going to take even longer if you're pulling money out of it. So you can't rely on just the return over time to be great if you're pulling money out to live. So once you start withdrawing, 
the game changes completely. You can't follow this. It always comes back rule. Don't worry. It'll come back. You can't do that when you're retired. So you have to have a withdrawal plan to factor it in. There you go. The withdrawal plan. That's the key. Have a withdrawal plan for when you do hit retirement. Otherwise, right. you could end up in, in, in real trouble. And don't and, withdraw until you retire. Right. And and these 401k uh, reviews from, from Fidelity aren't going to discuss withdrawal plans because it's a completely different topic. They're just interested, how are they growing these funds? And that's what most mm -hmm. financial people are worried about. That's what most employees are worried about. Right. How much am I putting in? Is it growing? Is it growing? Is it growing? That's all they care about. But eventually you can't worry so much about growth. You have to worry about spending and it's a completely different conversation. And that's what people need to be aware of. So I'm happy to see savings rates are up. I'm happy to see total values in the market are up, but I'm also disappointed to see that many loans. Yeah. And, um, you know, people using it as a piggy bank instead of thinking, all right, this is for my future. How am I going to spend it? And it's not, you know, I'm not telling people that are 50 years old to say, oh, I, I need to, I need to figure this out. I need to worry about, it. no, if you're not retiring for another 10 years, this is not a conversation you need to be having, but you just need to know, Hey, as I get closer to retirement, I need to stop thinking about growth and start thinking about protection and income. Yeah. Yep. That's it. Exactly. Yeah. And you're the guy you've helped so many people do this and come up with a withdrawal plan and a retirement income plan, as well as uh, the plan to get them there in their, in their earlier years, the, the, uh, savings and growth plan. So, yeah. uh, how can our listeners, Dan, get a hold of you to set up a no charge consultation to talk about this? I think the easiest way is to go to dolphinfinancialgroup.com. Just go to the website. You can click around. I'm revamping it soon, Tony, this summer, by the oh, end of the summer, it'll be brand new website. Um, so it'll be a, a chance for pe people to contact and look, watch these other videos, watch the videos on drawdown in, you know, taking income, learning that strategy. That's the important part. Or you could just call the number is 888-508-5935. I'll put the numbers up here, Tony. Thanks for a good show. And we'll catch everyone next week. All matters discussed in today's show are for informational purposes only. This show is not investment advice. Dan Whittle nor Dolphin Financial Group are affiliated or endorsed by any government agency. Investment advisory services are offered through Dolphin Wealth Management Inc., a registered investment advisor in the state of Florida. Insurance products and services are offered through Dolphin Insurance Inc. Dolphin Wealth Management Inc. and Dolphin Insurance Inc. are affiliated companies doing businesses as Dolphin Financial Group. You should talk to someone at Dolphin Financial Group before implementing any of these strategies or ideas.